In this video, I want to talk about steps you can take when you attempt to SSH into a remote server or system using SSH keys as your authentication method and it fails, specifically when it fails with the error permission denied public key. Now to understand why this is failing, let's first talk big picture of how SSH keys work. And for this, I'm going to actually refer to another guide I have on setting up SSH keys because there's a useful graphic down here that visualizes the whole process. So looking at this, the way that SSH keys work is you have what's referred to as a key pair that contains two keys, a private key and a public key. And the private key needs to exist on your computer or whatever system you're connecting from. And the public key has to exist on the server or system that you're connecting to. And when you attempt to make an SSH connection between these systems, the SSH protocol is going to read these keys and look for a match. And assuming it finds a match, it's going to authenticate you and allow you to have access to that server. Knowing this, if you're attempting to connect and it's failing, we basically have to check these two keys. We have to make sure that they're a match. We have to make sure they uh, exist in the appropriate location on both systems. And finally, we want to make sure that when you're attempting to make the connection, your system that you're connecting from is actually trying to use the keys that you've specified. So with those checks in mind, let's go through that process and check each of those things. And to do this, I'm going to go back to the notes for this guide. And I'm going to start down here with step number one making sure that your keys are a match. And the first thing we want to do here is move into our computer's SSH directory where our keys should be generated. So I'm going to bring up my command line window. I'm going to change into my home directory and that .ssh directory. And I'm going to run a list command to see the contents. And from this output, you just want to confirm that you have the keys that you're expecting, the ones that you generated when setting up the SSH uh, connection. And for this example, I'm going to focus on uh, this last key pair I have in this directory called Susan's MacBook. This is the key pair I'm going to be using to attempt to connect to my server. All right, so I see those two files exist. Um, the file without the extension is the private key. That's the one that must exist on the computer you're connecting from. And then the public key is the one that a copy of this needs to be installed on the server you're connecting to. And I'll talk about that in a moment, but before we do that, I wanna just first make sure that these keys are actually a match. And the way I can do that, if we go back to the notes, there's a command we can run that is uh, going to basically interpret the private key and output what the corresponding public key should be. And we can look at that output and compare it against the contents of our public key and make sure that they're actually a match. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna run this SSH key gen command. There's a few flags added there, and then you just wanna follow that up with the name of your private key. So I'm gonna run that. All right, so this is telling me for that private key, this is the corresponding public key that it's expecting. So let's now look at our public key contents and make sure that it's a match. So I'll just use the cat command here that'll just output the contents of the public key file. And from this output, we want to focus on the key itself. So that starts with these characters and goes all the way down here to this equal sign. And if we look at the output from above, we can see that this is a match. So you can see the key starts with four A's, B, three N, etc. We see the same thing down here. You can see the ending of the key. It ends with this six K equals. We can see that here and we can assume that everything else in the middle is a match. So since that checks out, let's move on to our next step, which is making sure that our SSH protocol is actually attempting to use this key pair. And the way we're going to do that uh, is if we look at the directory contents of our SSH directory again, we should have this file called config. This is our SSH config file. And I'm going to just open it up here in command line using the nano text editor. So I'm going to say nano config. And within this file, we want to make sure we have a line called identity file, and it should specify the path to our private key. And in my case, you can see I've got that line there. I can double check that the path is correct. Everything looks good there. So I don't need to make any changes here. I just want to check that this exists. Uh, and again, this will just make it so that when we attempt to make an SSH connection, it's going to attempt to use this key. Um, now, I should note, this is only necessary if when you generated your keys, you gave them a custom name. If you use the default name it prompts you to use, which is IDRSA, you don't have to have this line in your config file because it's always going to attempt to use a key called IDRSA because it is the default. So this step is only necessary if you came up with a custom key name. All right, in my case, it checks out. So I'm going to exit out of Nano. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is actually attempt the SSH connection, but I'm going to add a dash V flag to my SSH command. This is short for verbose. And what this is going to do is just give me extra debugging information um, about the connection, specifically when it fails, so that I can look at that information and make sure it is actually attempting to use the key pair that I'm expecting. All right, so let's uh, attempt a connection here. I'm going to connect to the server I'm working with in this example, just under my root username. Of course, you would want to change this for whatever username you're connecting at. And then you want to follow that up with the IP address or the server name that you're connecting to. And you can see here's all that debugging output we get from that dash V flag. And we just want to skim through here and make sure we see reference to the key pair we're expecting. All right, so here's that reference to my uh, Susan's MacBook private key within my home directory's SSH directory. So it looks like that was offered. It did use that, which means I did set up my config file correctly. Uh, but obviously the connection is still failing. So we've still got a problem here. And at this point, I've reached the end of the things I can check on my computer in terms of why it might be failing. So now I have to turn my attention to the server I'm attempting to connect to and see what might be wrong there. Uh, and specifically, the first thing I want to check coming back to our diagram is I want to make sure that I properly installed the corresponding public key on the server. Now, the tricky part about this is in order to check that this public key exists on the server, I have to be able to connect to the server. And obviously, right now, I am not able to do that. My attempts to connect are failing. So how do we do that? Well, there's a few different options. Option one might be you might have some other computer that is able to connect to the server, right? Let's say you had an existing work computer that had a SSH key set up with the server fine, you're able to connect. And what you're trying to set up now is just maybe a new computer or a private computer, something like that. In that case, you would want to go on the computer that already has access and connect to that server so that you can check the public keys. Um, or alternatively, maybe you have a colleague that has access to the server that can get in and check them for you. Uh, if you don't have that as an option, let's say it's a brand new server, you don't already have a computer that's connected to it. Um, another thing you might be able to do is to connect and authenticate using a username and password. Now, in my case, that's not possible because as you saw when I attempt to connect to the server, it just failed, right? It failed, it tried to use the SSH keys, it wasn't able to connect, it never actually prompted for a username and password. And that's because this server is configured to actually not allow username and password logins, just because they're considered less secure than an SSH connection. Um, now that's not gonna be the case on all servers. You might see that when you go to SSH in, it fails because your SSH keys aren't working, but it then prompts you for a username and password. And if you know what that information is, well, that's how you could log in and then you could check your keys. Um, let's say it's asking for a username and password, but you're not sure what it is, what your, your authentication password is for your server. Oftentimes you can find that information out from your server provider. Uh, and just to demonstrate this, let me go back and uh, go to my server provider, just as an example. This is digitalocean.com. I'm currently logged into my control panel and the server I'm trying to connect to is this one right here called demo. So if I go into my options here, uh, there's an option called access. And then within here, there's an option to reset my root password. And if I did this, it would actually email me a new password I could use to connect to the server. And the first time I connect, it would prompt me to reset that password just for security purposes. So that is one option. Um, but again, in my case, this wouldn't even be an option I could use because even if I knew what a password was for that root user, because password authentication is disabled, I wouldn't be able to do that. So knowing that, that brings me to the third and final way that we can get access to the server, and that's via my server provider itself. Uh, in the case of DigitalOcean, it provides this option called console. You can see more information about it here. And what this is going to do is it's going to provide terminal-like access to my server via my web browser. And let me show you what it looks like. So let's go ahead and launch the console. You can see it's connecting to my server. And now I'm connected and I've got command line access to my server. All right, so definitely look around in your server provider for options for whether it be resetting your uh, user's password or accessing some sort of web console. It might be called something else in different providers, but many providers provide this as an option as essentially an emergency way to get access to your server if you're otherwise locked out, which we currently are. All right, so let me bring that back up. Let me bring back that window that's connected to my server. And now that we're on the server, we want to check and make sure that our public SSH key is properly installed on the server. 
And the way we're going to do that is we're going to, again, go to a SSH directory in the home directory. Of course, this time it's not on our computer. We're dialed into our server. And then within here, we want to look for a file called authorized keys. This is where public keys that have access to the server should be placed. So I'll go ahead and open that with Nano. And looking through here, you can see there's one key that's here, but there's a comment here that says it was added and managed by DigitalOcean Droplet Agent. So this key was actually added by DigitalOcean when I loaded the console. That's what gives me access to the server via this console. But that's not the key we're trying to connect with. Uh, if we go back to my terminal window and look at the contents of my Susan's MacBook, dot pub key, this is the key that we should see in that file in order to have the access using this key pair. And uh, that's clearly not there. So in my case, this is my problem. This is why I'm not able to connect because the por uh, corresponding public key is not on the server as expected. So let's fix that. I'm going to go back and copy the contents of that key starting with SSH RSA all the way to the end of the identifier I gave to that key, basically the full contents. Copy that, go back to the web console, paste it in and then I'm going to save my changes in nano and the way we do that is we hold down Control X we type Y to confirm we hit enter all right and let's just double check that I'll use the cat command to look at the content uh, contents of my authorized key file and that looks good so the first few lines are for the console key and then following that on its own line is the key for my computer all right so let's uh, exit the console come back to my uh, terminal window and let's attempt our SSH connection again. And hopefully it should work this time. So I'm just gonna use the up arrow and go back to my SSH command I had used uh, previously. I'll leave the verbose flag in there. There's no harm in having it output debugging information, but I think it should connect this time. So let's give it a shot. And perfect, there we go. So we could see the prompt for our server. We're no longer seeing that permission denied error. Uh, looks like the problem was fixed, and in my case, it was just a matter of not having that public key properly installed on the server. And hopefully along the way, this uh, solved your problem as well, but if not, just a recap of the steps that we took. Uh, the first thing we did is just making sure on our computer that our keys existed and that they were a match with one another. We also had to make sure that our local SSH protocol on our computer was attempting to use our key, especially if we used a custom key name. And then finally, we just had to make sure that our public key was properly placed within that authorized key file on the remote server that we were connecting to.